Beyond. 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 Wow, that's so nice that only two people said that. Like, <laughs> well, th- I guess four people said it, but it was normal. It wasn't I really just... thought about it. I oh, really it's so thought cool. about it. It's so cool. great to not have as that a, happen. As a defender of you, Maxwell, I also think that is very silly when well, you guys do a round table. And now they hate me as much yeah. as they hate you. As a, as well, welcome, to the, welcome yeah. to the club of being hated. <laughs> uh, welcome to Podcast Beyond, episode 436. This is, and I quote, a PlayStation podcast. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> uh, I'm Max Scoville. Indeed. Sometimes I host the show, sort of. There's no ham here today, but there is Marty Sleva. Hi, Max. Mitch Dyer. What's the point? I, good question. I was told there'd be ham. <laughs> well, we just we had to say something to get you in here. And Zach Ryan. Sup. Now, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that patented catchphrase. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Sup. Zach Ryan actually produces Up at Noon that I do with Brian every week. Uh, Mitch. Is uh, what do you do here? Oh, I quit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and Mitch is leaving what soon. What did you do here? Uh, yeah, gold? this is your last appearance on Beyond. Yeah, uh, all oh. I had to do to get invited was uh, leave my job. Yeah, well, you've been on many an episode. Don't cop that too. This might be the fourth time. BS. Bologna. BS. <laughs> Baloney school. Uh, okay, so here we are, Podcast Beyond. We're going to talk about some games and stuff because you get real, real salty when we don't do that and when we eat the ham instead. I'm sorry about that, seriously. Uh, here's the thing that got announced is Batman, a Telltale game series. The secret yeah. of Batman has been revealed to the world. This is coming out this summer. It's going to be rated M, and you're going to switch between being huh. Bruce and Batman segments mm-hmm. that will inform one another. Uh, here's some good news. It's going to be an updated version of Telltale's engine. So oh, thank Christ. It, <laughs> it definitely needs yeah. it. It is yeah. so long overdue. I do not, I, I will reserve excitement until I see what the changes are. The last Telltale game that I finished was uh, The Wolf Among Us, um, basically due to the engine. I played a, a fair amount of Game of Thrones and most of Tales for the Borderland, um, but that engine is so bad that I just, I, I don't know, I couldn't bring You're myself You're playing to, on, like, PS4? Xbox yeah. One? Something like that? PS4. Yeah, I don't know. Can you play this on PC? This is a PlayStation podcast, yeah. Marty. Of no, course I, I was playing <laughs> on the PlayStation 4. Um, yeah, I, I haven't had that much issue with the engine. I understand the engine kind of sucks, but, like, it doesn't really matter to me, honestly, yeah. which my, is a weird thing to say. My takeaway has always been not so much that the engine has problems, but that their kind of QA is spread thin because they're like, this is coming out for Xbox One, <laughs> yeah, and PS4, yeah. and PS3, right. and Xbox 360, and Wii U, and Vita, and Android. iPhone, and your yeah. shoes, yeah. And, your, yeah. and your toaster, coming and fridge out for your, your I- Apple Watch. Coming soon to yeah. calculators. Yeah. 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 Game Boy Color. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I mean, yeah, an updated version of the engine is. I don't know what that means. Uh, they said they, they said it's going to be like a vast improvement. I don't know, you know, what that means. What was their judgment on that? Um, I the two things that are super interesting here are the uh, rated M, which is rare for a Batman property that isn't a video game, or that is uh, excuse me, that isn't a uh, film. No, you can't you can't a yes, film comic book. <laughs> List that the doesn't, mediums. That doesn't have uh, yes. Frank Miller's name before it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, also, I love the idea that it is going to sort of be split in half between uh, segments as Bruce and segments as Batman and sort of you having to role play as this really awful billionaire playboy. I would love to just be the playboy the whole time. Yeah. Yep. Honestly, like, Batman's pretty cool, but we've done a lot of Batman punching and swinging and totally. detective stuff. I'm all about just buying hotels, just going around being a real jerk. <laughs> Jumping in fountains. Yeah. 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 yeah, doing a couple fun kisses. Walking yeah. on lawns. You Thinking that Vichy Swaz is supposed to be hot, but it's not. It's cold soup. It's cold soup. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Using my Batman credit card to go through drive through Yeah. In that Batman car. Wait, that's Batman. Never mind. That yeah. is regular Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce you, you, Wayne does not drive the Batman yeah, I was car. Say, you get a lot of questions if Bruce Wayne's driving the Batmobile. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I feel like the cat would be out of the bag. <laughs> I'm going to go see Edward Nigma. <laughs> the bat would be out of the like, cave uh, if it yeah. as a word. Mr. Nigma, I don't know if this is a good idea. I met you before, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Are you guys, I mean, where are Kick you guys at Cole A door. in uh, terms of Batman stuff and B in terms of Telltale? Man, yeah. I am super down with Batman stuff still. Like, the new 52 Batman, they, they just sort of wind it, wound, wound winded. It has, it has sort of concluded mm-hmm. uh, in that Zack Snyder and Greg Capullo are no longer on it mm-hmm. after issue 51, but it was like 51 perfect issues of Batman. It's like the best the series has been since Jim Lee yeah. in like the 90s. 90s. Yeah, and it's like totally reinvigorated my interest in mm-hmm. Batman. Not that it ever really, really went away. Mm-hmm, it just sure. sort of enhanced it. So I'm super excited by this. I love the notion of making choices like as Batman or Bruce Wayne. Like uh, you get a problem and then you pick, okay, I'm going to do this as Bruce or I'm mm-hmm. going to do this right. as Batman. 
And that's a major thing, because that will totally change what the rest of that episode looks like. Well, especially considering how they've discussed how the influences, or how the decisions influence each other. Like, how you make yeah. decisions as Bruce influences the way you play as Batman, right? Um, I think that's super interesting. That's the thing that's kind of hooked me into the game, because I, I feel like as far as Batman games go, I'll always play a Batman game. I, like, full disclosure, I booted up uh, Arkham Knight this weekend and just pl- just flew around the city for full a little while. Full disclosure, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a bad game. Just be really transparent. I played that really dumb game. It's not a bad game. It's not a great game, but it's it's super fun to just fly around. And like that part of of the Batman experience, I feel like is fine. But I feel like where Telltale will excel is like more of the detective stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like you'll play way more as a detective than than a combatant. I really hope that they put more of an emphasis on like detective stuff and like kind of that. Like Telltale is really good at doing the storytelling stuff, obviously, and the and the kind of the, the dialogue things. But that's always been the least exciting part of adventure games to me. Like I love the point and click. Like, what's this thing for? Mm-hmm. Look at yes, sure. you know. Like yeah. I love that kind of stuff. I love having an inventory. Like that old kind of like LucasArts approach. Uh, it's cool to have like branching dialogue trees, but that kind of. I don't know. That always kind of burned me out. Like I remember, like in in like Walking Dead season one, I was really annoyed that like. I think throughout the first episode, you maybe I think you like pick up like three things. Sure, like it's yeah. really, and you can you can still interact with your environment, but for no reason. Mm-hmm. You yeah. like open drawers, and you're like, oh, there's nothing in here. Okay. Yeah, Wolf Among Us did a pretty good job. I mean, because Bigby was you know a PI pretty much, um, and so it did a good job of like you getting to a really messed up crime scene and informing yourself of what is happening based on like right. the order of stuff that you're looking at and having to like piece a couple things together, which I think could be you know super cool in a Batman game. Also, like the idea of if if I'm Batman and I get just the shit kicked out of me in a fight and you know I get totally beat up, then the next morning as Bruce Wayne, when I'm playing as Bruce Wayne, I have to start explaining to people why are my ribs broke? I'm like, bad at polo. Why do I, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm totally. not a good polo yeah. guy. Yeah, um, I've been doing that uh, that Zumba fitness. So. Jillian Michaels is my personal trainer, and she beat the crap out of me. Oh, Jillian. Yeah. Um, I'm also yeah. I hope they do like. One thing that the Arkham games haven't done in my mind, aside from the Joker, is really made bad guys interesting. Like mm-hmm. they, they made bad guys interesting in terms of like that was a cool fight, a boss yes, fight against yes, Mr. Yeah. Freeze. Oh, the Scarecrow hallucinations were cool. Yeah, but I didn't yeah, care about any sucks. of these things. Whereas like you know, obviously the Joker. Uh, it seems like the Joker is that one thing that like everything's able to nail. Like the mm-hmm. Joker's yeah. the most interesting part of the animated series of the uh, well, you know of Christopher Nolan trilogy. Yeah. Um, and of so it would be cool. Books, yeah, totally. Of probably of Batman in its entirety. Its entirety yeah. yeah. God, it's, I would love to see. Telltale take a stab at making its own villain, like a new new villain. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't that know. hasn't really turned that. out. It's so turned out well for the Arkham Knight. What about uh, Rise of uh, Sinzu? <laughs> Oh, no. Man. Man. Remember, remember, remember that little gem? Obviously, it was DC, but Hush is still a relatively new villain that nobody ever really did anything with. Hush and makes a lot of sense for this because he's, you know, playing yeah. both sides of the coin, really. Yeah. yeah, it's all about deception rather than violence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or at least it's like violence by way of somebody else, not him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could, I could be down with the Riddler, like, just because that's... Solving mysteries. He's, he's less stuff. of, like, he is so much of a... Uh, I mean, he's he does he does riddles. They're not like yeah. you don't have to punch right him. There in you don't name. have to punch him in the face. You know, it makes it makes more we sense for like a, for a Telltale game than it does for like like Mr. Freeze. Right. I'd be like it'd be really tedious if you were like, yeah, you got to figure out a way to unfreeze your leg, and you're like, I'm gonna go in the garage and look for hot water. Yeah, to yeah. Melt, <laughs> to melt this. Yeah, I also thought it would have like a Telltale GCPD game would have been kind of cool. Yeah. Huh. yeah, which is a comic series based where it's just you are the Gotham City Police Department and. You have to deal with the fact that all of this stuff is going around. I guess Gotham, the crappy TV show, sort of does that, but that doesn't count because it's never seen it's, a big, it's, a dumb thing for, it's a dumb thing for babbies. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Telltale also said that Walking Dead season three is this year, mm-hmm. and they said that it is going to take an unexpected approach to tying together previous stories, and that it won't be from the same bag of tricks we've ever shown anybody before. We all know what that means. It's going to be a first-person shooter, car racing yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's going to be multiplayer. It's going to be part of the Jackbox. Yeah, the fourth right. Jackbox. Yeah, you know. um, yeah. I don't know. That's I, it, why why say anything? You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. like that's meaningless to me. Yeah, that doesn't. That's just. That's just. Well, that's and at this fluff. point, I feel like I've reached like franchise fatigue on The Walking Dead. Like I have, I'm not watching the show anymore. I every time I someone tells half me of season two, like I'm not interested. Two, in I like season two a lot. Yeah, I can't get excited for Michonne. Yeah, I haven't played Michonne. Uh, I can just, I haven't played it. Oh no, I'm just kind of over that whole like yeah. zombie apocalypse. Whenever people tell me what's going on this season, The Walking Dead, they're like, Oh my god, I can't believe they did this. I'm like, That's why is that interesting? I can't yeah. believe That's Merle changed his name to Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. So uh, on the subject of. Uh, <laughs> Great kart racing games. Um, Sony has closed Evolution Studios, who are the guys behind Motorstorm, uh, Motorstorm Pacific Rift, and Motorstorm Apocalypse, 
and Drive Club, yeah, which was sort of their last thing, which took a really long time to come out. Right. And mm-hmm. kind of, I feel like Drive Club VR is still on the way, but <coughs> yeah. does anyone? Drive does Club anyone, proper kind of fell flat. I, yeah. I, like that was one of those games that like it came out and I didn't realize it had come out because I didn't hear anyone talking. Right. Well, yeah. it was supposed to be a launch game, right? Sony's answer to like Forza, right? Yeah. Wasn't Drive Club supposed to be like? And I'm 99 percent sure it was supposed to be available day one with PS4. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they delayed it sort of last minute and then again. And then it and came then it was out like half free to play or something. Yeah, like well, there was beta. supposed to be like the if you have PlayStation Plus. God, I'm totally gonna get skewered for misremembering this, but I'm pretty no, sure it it's was, honestly this is go this easy. Is, it's his last episode. They mixed, <laughs> they mixed also, the messaging I don't really care. hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like that. I mean, this is such a bummer. Like, because like I guess these guys are gonna go off and do something cool. But like MotorStorm, I've always I've always loved that series. Yeah, yeah me too, man. Fun as hell. It's, also, that's one of those things like I would have loved to see on PS4. Just like because those games look so good on PS3, yeah. all mm-hmm. of them. And like imagining how that would look now would be incredible. They just kept trying to do new cool stuff. Like MotorStorm on PS3. The first time I saw it, it was like that that launch day. I don't know if the full game was out or whatever it was, but there was always a demo at every station I played at Best mm-hmm. Buy or whatever. And it was always that same desert track, and you'd mm-hmm. listen to Nirvana and just ride around the. Desert desert and it's just like this is stunning and fast and cool and everything I want out of a, a next gen racing game. I mean and they just got better. I, I would say that those games are probably the best Mad Max games that exist. <laughs> I mean, like, honestly, yeah. Yeah. Apocalypse is straight up not even pretending it's not, but all those other games, it's like, yeah, here's a bunch of totally different vehicles that are all racing. They all have jet rocket engines. They all engines, piecemeal. And yeah. they all explode. <laughs> like, yeah. like the way trucks explode in, in like Fury Road. Like That's what they look like in MotorStorm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, totally. I'm it's awesome. Bummed we don't yeah. get more. Which is so weird to see them take it a step back. Like, go to a realistic to, to like a super yeah. sim. Yeah. Yeah. Like why answer, I, I don't know, so you could have a Gran Turismo game and GT off years? It just never made any sense to me to do this social driving mm-hmm. game. Yeah, it also, yeah, it almost felt like they were trying to do the Forza, Forza Horizons thing that uh, Microsoft's able to do. Well, but, it's like, because Polyphony just works in its own world. They yeah. don't answer to anybody. They make their games, and when it's ready, they, pu- they put it out. Yeah, and, and we know Sony that. And Sony can't control that. Yeah, and we know, yeah, this is actually my typo here. I, I don't think Drive Club VR is ever going to be a thing. I think I was getting confused with both uh, Gran Turismo VR, which we know is coming. Mm. That put, is that a thing? Yeah, that we know Polyphony is oh, working cool. on, and uh, Project Cars is going to be, I believe, oh, yes. launching with Oculus, well, or at yeah. least, yeah. Did Drive Club ever have, uh, this is a dumb question, I'm going to get skewered for this, I still work here. Uh, <laughs> Good luck. Until, until I say this question, did that ever have like third person view or was it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I remember when they announced it, they were like, it's a first person driving Drive game. Club? Well, Forza with, does that too. Yeah. yeah. But with like, here's a here's like all these custom interiors. We're putting just as much attention to the yeah. interior as we yeah. the yeah. exterior. But also, we made like, these car models. Yeah. Please look at them. But like, yeah. and to be fair, like, like I don't really, I, I, I'm not a fan of like super simmy uh, car games, but having seen sort of like a couple months ago, I saw a demo of what Drive Club has eventually became, and the game is like super gorgeous. Like the weather effects in that game are mm-hmm. crazy and everything. I think the problem was remember they originally called the game hashtag Drive Club. No one's ever gonna, <laughs> no one's ever gonna call it that. No one's ever gonna do no. that. Um, but yeah, I mean that's it's a super bummer, especially I mean this what in the last week or two between uh, Fifth Cell Lionhead. Fifth, yeah, this is not. I don't know. This is never. Yeah, Never watching did. game devs close sucks. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Honestly, and Couple I don't know. Those. Yeah, like the the only thing you could hope from this is that like uh, what happened to Irrational that uh, these people sort of pollinate across the industry and end yeah, up you know cool things. Yeah, and cool things. I hope they go make a road rash game. Like that's the rest awesome. Awesome. somebody make a road rash. Somebody game. please Was make a road rash game. Gonna make a road rash game. There was rumors right. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're making Pod Racer. I hope. Oh, that would be the best. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. EA could totally do that. Oh yeah. I never even thought about that. Yeah, That's right? the greatest thing I've ever heard. Burnout Racer Revenge. That'd be su- yeah, that'd be such an awesome <laughs> franchise to bring yeah. back, yes. especially yeah. now. God, can you imagine how good it would look? Do you remember playing it in the arcade and thinking about like, just how, like, oh, there's never been anything that looks this good. How this do video games look yeah. better than this? I would be ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like real talk though. In I would be shocked <laughs> if in the next five years we see any video game thing that delves back into the prequels for Star Wars. Like, yeah, honestly, probably not like, film. Like, there's comics right now. Like, there's the Obi Wan and Anakin comic yeah. series, which is pretty good, but. I yeah, feel like now they're, they're really like, ah, it. this is just look forward, look forward. Yeah. yeah. So my whole thing is I don't really give a crap about cars, uh, but I do like games that make it feel well, like yeah, they're going well, fast. Yeah, well, how do you get around, Max? A really huge bike. <laughs> nice. I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> One of those big penny farthings. Um, but no, like, I, I love that. I just, the, the, the feeling of going really fast is kind of one of those just fundamental video game mm-hmm. sensations that I think is great. And, like, I've always loved the MotorStorm games for really capturing that. And, uh, 
you know, I think that, you know, Need for Speed obviously does it pretty well. Drive Club's always kind of aired more on the side of simulation, same with Gran Turismo. Mm-hmm. Like, those are for people who actually do like cars and they want to, like, uh, yeah, gearheads. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think that's um, part of the reason, yeah, like, I could never get into Gran Turismo because it was just, like, so tech. Yeah. Like, yeah. so yeah. tech. Where you're driven. modifying, like, the angle of yeah. your front axis. Yeah. yeah. Like, but, like, all this, like, your drag like and stuff but is like, like uh, no, let's go real fast. Like, the four of us are the minority because, totally. like, Gran Turismo is by far Sony's biggest first party franchise. Like mm-hmm. terms of sales, which is weird. Yeah, that's I guess crazy. that's true. Kids love cars. Yeah, yeah. cars gotta are go uh, fast. Is gotta the go blue fa- friend, <laughs> yeah. Our blue friend yeah. said that's a popular. Our blue friend being the Ford Motor Company got yes. go fast. Yeah. Uh, so here's a weird rumor that's been floating around: the PlayStation 4.5, aka the PlayStation 4K. Uh, it's a new, rumored, pro- possibly non-existent thing that would be upgrading the GPU so that the PS4 <laughs> can handle 4K output. A uh, new power supply unit, expansion pack. Uh, I guess better play with you know PlayStation VR. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does this mean? I think I've seen more people freaking out about this than actually being excited about it. And also, really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I kind of get that concern. So this news kind of trickled out last week, uh, and to me, it just seems like such a non sequitur for Sony to do something like this. I mean, they've they've released like updates to their platforms before, like we've seen slim versions or you know, <laughs> something along those lines. But this is this is something akin more to like the new Nintendo 3DS, right? Exactly, so, like, yeah. Nintendo released a souped up version of their 3DS with a C-stick and a faster processor and um, the ability to do graphics in 4D. Well, this is, um, but, it's, it's almost a transition between the DS and the 3DS. Right. More directly. Sure. Where it's a, it's specifically a visual enhancement. Like obviously, but I also were, think, I also think it's impossible, like nearly impossible for Sony to pull this off because it's like even the most souped up PCs have a hard time running like full sure. 4K so it just seems like they'd have to do so much so much improvement to the architecture of the PlayStation 4 to allow well, it to yeah, do that yeah and I'm sure that right now whatever this is if we assume this is real and it is in developer hands I'm sure that this thing is on a massive giant VCR stereo mm-hmm. sized thing where they're like okay yeah. I would, it works cool yeah. let's figure out how to it looks, it. <laughs> it looks I mean, like the PlayStation 4 dev kits like yeah, the yeah, exactly. steel boxes yeah, yeah. So like, I haven't really screwed with a 4K TV much like I don't really it's one of those things where I'm, I'm kind of feeling old enough that I'm like I got a good collection of Blu-rays I like looking at stuff in 1080p it looks fine to me still uh, I actually kind of dislike it when things have that Hobbit-looking frame rate. With totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also, like our online infrastructure isn't ready to stream in 4K exactly. yet. Yeah. Like, um, but that said, like, what happens if you take a, a PS4 and hook it up to the 4K TV? Does it just look normal? Like, does it render it at 1080p? Probably 1080. Yeah. yeah. In the same way that it'll render a 720 if you don't have a 1080p TV. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I imagine that might have a little bit of like jaggedness to yeah. it. I mean, this doesn't mean well, if it, this does happen, I would imagine that it would mean like maybe support for whatever format. Like 4K is coming to like in streaming services or digital video. Yeah, when Netflix eventually yeah. does it. Or yeah, I'm I'm more excited. Like, yeah, all of this, yes, but I'm more excited about what Uncharted Five will look like or what Last of Us Two will look like when they're like, okay, it is a native 4K game, mm-hmm. and majority of people are going to play in 1080, and that's fine. But man, if you have it on a 4K TV and you have it in this machine that has a, a bigger, better GPU baked into it, then you have this spectacular looking. Thing. Yeah, didn't any of you guys like, see the the Battlefront in 4K demo that was floating around? No, it was like Battlefront in 1080 60 for, or I'm sorry, not 1080 60, but in like 4K, full 60. 4K. Yeah, so that, oh, and it, it was just like it looked like looking out your window at Star Wars. Like it was, <laughs> it, it, it was insane. Hey, Mom, like, the Star Wars outside. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was yes, nuts, the Star man. Wars outside. Um, Honestly, yeah. I just feel bad for developers. Like, yeah, because that's like I, I feel like the the quality of games we're seeing in AAA right now is barely sustainable, and that's trying to yeah, make and it happen. Yeah, the benchmark just sky. Rockets yeah. overnight. Well, now you have to wonder, like, what are people who are, are making games thinking about what their game is? Yeah. So do they now start making games for the best they could possibly be on this, this new machine it back. and scaling it back for yeah. Xbox One yeah. or the regular PlayStation Four or whatever? Or well, like, yeah. what is the new standard? I mean, this, but this news also sort of came a week after the uh, that w- big Windows Ten event where yep. uh, Phil Spencer was. They were just sort of talking about the fact that like the Xbox One, the Xbox One's architecture can also now sort of grow year by year. And I don't know if that means that uh, Microsoft and Sony are almost going to take this uh, Apple approach to where every year or two there's an iterative, there's a new uh, there's a new PS4 that is better than the old PS4, but don't worry because if you bought a launch PS4, you could still play the games, but then... And that's why I think this is real. That's why yeah. I think this machine is coming and it will happen. Can, when, who knows, but I think the iterative technology and upgradable hardware is the future of console games. Yeah. Sure, I mean, look at the PC market, right? And I think, you're, I think you're talking about like 
the next platform that Sony puts out, what if it's just called the PlayStation, <laughs> and then they just sell upgrades, the proprietary yeah. upgrades to the box? Well, then you know what I mean, like you know, like iPhone, you just you throw a number on the end of it, and it's a model rather than indicative of a generational shift. Yeah, so yeah, like but, and then yeah. Also yeah. Allows, well, and also yeah, yeah, or the means. SE now. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. that. Yeah, I was gonna exactly. say it allows for scale, right? So if you need one that does 4K or you need one that does 1080, you buy the PlayStation yeah. SE. Yes. Yeah, you know, as opposed I mean, to so one of the other interesting things about this is that. Uh, we saw the PSVR this week, and <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we saw that it comes. Uh, you know, no matter how you buy it, in order to run, it needs this little sort of external processing box. Right. Uh, that it looks like a tiny PlayStation Four. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's a little yeah. guy. That's yeah. cute. Um, and so they said that's sort of you know that that the PSVR uses the internal power like 100 percent of the PS4 in order to get the the image on your cool goggles, and that this processing boxes so that like things can still happen on the TV at the same time. And so what I think if this thing would exist, I think whenever this PlayStation 4.5 comes out, all of that would be internal in the PlayStation. And then I think that would mean that they would start a PSVR SKU that is cheaper than you know that maybe PSVR 2.0 mm -hmm. is going to be cheaper and more powerful because it doesn't require this external thing that yeah, it comes that's with. Yeah, at least eighteen months away. Yeah, oh, yeah. but yeah. I'm saying like that's an interesting like this by the by three, four, five years from now, this could be a really confusing generation to Yo, be like. Yeah. Like, like grandma can't go into a store anymore and just buy a thing. It's like, well, which thing do you have? And you have to make sure that you have the thing. And uh, you got to buy the thing with the PlayStation well, it's, camera. It's like or building else. a PC. It's like, okay, well, I've yeah. got the Sandy Bridge. And I want to make sure that I can get Crossfire, but I also need to make sure this Radeon fits into it. That's a that's a Mario Kart track. Sand, sand 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 bridge. Bridge. <laughs> There's a hack that you can drive off the side and then right yeah. below you. It's crazy. Sandy no. Bridge went away. Nobody has that. Um, exactly. Do you think? Do you think some of the because you said that people are like flipping out about it, right? And do you think that some of the concern is that those of us that have a uh, regular PlayStation 4 will be left in the dust on certain games. Like like for the new 3DS, right? You can only play uh, Xenoblade, Xenoblade yeah. on I don't, new 3DS. I don't see you, that being a thing. So like, I don't it, think will there happen. be ex no. exclusively no. PlayStation 4 no, no, no. I think there will be games. exclusive features like uh -huh. stuff that runs at 4K optionally or okay. loading times being faster. Yeah. But... I don't think that they would do that because that would be just like cannibalizing their own sales. Yeah, it's it's I almost 20 see, million people or whatever, right? 30 million people right now yeah, that they're yeah. just like, bye. I almost yeah, see it as idiotic. games you'd be able to change, like a PC game going from high to max settings. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, max, max settings. settings. Oh. Max <laughs> settings. <laughs> um, no, I think that uh, I think that also like a lot of people just they feel like they just bought a PS4. A lot of people did just buy a PS4. Yeah. People are always yeah. just buying. Someone's buying a PS4, right? No. You did a good job. I just bought a Brad one. Yeah. Buy Brad 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 them together and make um, a PS8. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, but no. <laughs> <laughs> or you could be like Chappie and put a whole bunch together and then hack a Oh, Chappie was so dumb. No, well, Chappie like, was a really good movie. Chappie, Chappie was a great movie. See, it was Chappie Diane was Ford awesome. Trash Fest. Also, that guy is the secret worst director ever. You're an idiot. No, District 9, real dumb movie. Wow. Just nine, oh, I love this. Me no. too. Elysium, like real, dumb Elysium real dumb movie. Elysium, real dumb movie. Yeah, no, I thought Elysium was okay. Elysium was supposed to be Eight Mile in Space. Elysium oh, was supposed what? to. That? It was supposed to star Eminem. Say what? It was supposed to star Eminem. It was going to be Eight Mile in Space with Halo guns. <laughs> Shut up. I win. <laughs> Uh, but that's not what it was. But how many, but that's, that's, Chappie but how is, many Chappie PlayStation is, 4s did he have? Chappie <laughs> is literally a like a Saturday morning cartoon. There's that part where they show him He Man and he's like. Chappie, or whatever Chappie says. Chappie was supposed to be Friday in space. Chappie they're making a totally different movie. <laughs> according, according to Max, Chappie is some kind of Pokemon that only says his speech only in his name. Chappie. Oh, I'm thinking Chappie. Wally. Yeah. Chappie. <laughs> I like Chappie. Also, I remember talking to somebody after they came out. They were like, that was such a dumb movie. They hooked up a bunch of PS4s together and they used it to hack something. And I was like, yeah, you know, NASA did the same thing. With the PlayStation 2. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. I think it's like the eighth largest supercomputer in the world. Is a remember bunch when of I was like, afraid Al Qaeda was going to use like PS2s to like yeah, hurt us? To, yeah. Oh my God. That was like on a cover of OPM. I Thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are we the real enemy? Uh, uh, that was real good. All right, so we went off the rails there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just think that like people people don't want like a, a they don't want to hear there's a new PlayStation. I, like I get I get that feeling when they announce a new piece of hardware and I'm like, ooh, that's pretty. It's prettier than the one that I have. Mm -hmm. Like I caught myself like yeah. buying the new iPhones the other day. Like this one I'm due for an upgrade in like December, but this phone is fine. It totally works. No, so but you, you had a you had a six. lawn mowing accident. You have a 6S? What? No, I have a 6. A 6. So um, I have a 5, and I'm looking at the SE like, that's the exact same phone, but, but different in size. Yeah. yeah. What if I had that? Yeah. See, I miss having, a, I kind of miss having a 5, but I also like this one because it's bigger. I don't know. This is not so an iPhone. Last, yeah. I mean, the last question like, that you have here is like, would you pay for it, and what would you pay for it? And I think that sort of feeds in directly what we're talking about, because I am that guy that has the tech, but is like, oh, that's a better version of so the tech that I have. Here's a, here's a weird one for you. It. What if... 
it didn't have an optical drive and it was just a hard disk. Ooh. I'd be totally into that. I yeah. just yeah. upgraded my hard drive to a two gigabyte hard drive. Super easy, by terabyte. the way. Or a two terabyte hard drive. Yeah, sorry. Um, and it's like I felt like a kid on Christmas because I downloaded all the games that I've bought since I own my PlayStation yeah. 4, I still have 1.3 terabytes. Yeah, damn. And yeah, yeah, and it's awesome. It's like, okay, I can I can literally play pretty much any game from here on out until it's time for the PlayStation 5, and it's awesome. Like, yeah. it's great. Like, and I, I would to- like, I'm definitely <clears throat> over the brick-and-mortar s- style of purchasing so games. I bought because a game at retail It's wonderful to, like, set it, like, pre-order a game, purchase it, Go to sleep and then wake up the next morning and it's already installed and yeah, ready to play. Or preload on it on Tuesday yeah. and then yeah. it's just ready the minute but the like, clock hits nine or the whatever. The one thing I would miss about that is the fact that like you were playing Max's uh, Far Cry copy, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Like you can't do that with yeah with digital copies. Yeah, like you can't point. be like, hey, I've just finished Bloodborne. Like you should check it out. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. No, sure. I don't know, game sharing might come back in some way, shape, or form. They've been talking about. Oh my about. god! Remember that? Yeah. That'd Jeez. be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I think if this did come out. I feel like this wouldn't be any more expensive. It would just be like this is the new four hundred dollar SKU, and then there's a two fifty uh, yeah. PS four SKU. So yeah, I would say yeah, I would pay probably the same price as a PlayStation four now, maybe up to a hundred dollars more for an upgrade. But I would like have that. to note like, like the new the new three DS is such it like it has literally one game that is exclusive, and then evidently Hyrule Warriors runs a lot better. Yeah, but you can change stupid, the face plates. So cute. Nah, I, I don't yeah, play my I games in the dark yeah. though. Yeah, you can't see cute things in the also, dark. Also, that screen is way nicer, and the 3D is better. And I don't. Know. That's true. This is not a Nintendo three, podcast. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You said we wanted to talk about Nintendo this week. Can we get no? Can we get Jose in here? <laughs> no. Where's Pierre? Where's Pierre? Pierre. Uh, yeah. So Resident Evil is 20 years old. It's almost allowed to drink. Uh, it is old enough to have be nostalgic for itself, probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Marty, you wrote things here. Talk about them. Um, yeah, Resident Evil uh, One is turning 20. Uh, and that to me is one of the, that's sort of one of the games I associate with the PS1 and uh, sort of by proxy Sony as a whole because I feel like a lot of my memories of PlayStation are founded on that original uh, console. And so I think alongside Symphony of the Night and Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy VII, uh, the original Resident Evil, which I didn't play until the director's cut, which I think was 90... 97, 98? Was, I remember, I remember yeah. the ads for that. Like, yeah. What was the difference? It might have been 97. So the director's uh, cut had a few few different so there were shots that got edited in America yeah. so it was like the, some of the censorship was taken out I think that there was different enemy placement they originally bleeped it when she said Jill Sandwich was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you can't say a Jay Sandwich uh, um, <laughs> yeah there was, that, there was that iconic scene right at the beginning where you come across the first zombie and he turns around and looks at you that was censored in the original version and right. then the other version is his head's coming off and also Director's Cut had dual shock support yes. I want to say that makes sense and also had a demo for Resident Evil 2 on it which mm-hmm. came oh, cool. out a couple of weeks after um, but yeah to me I mean this is the game that put Shinji Mikami on the map mm-hmm. uh, and sort of this and was Raccoon like, City and Raccoon City yeah which is actually on maps yeah no it's that's not a real place though. it's a place though they don't have a map that says Shinji Mikami on it <laughs> <laughs> idiot <laughs> I'm gonna make a map and just write Shinji Mikami out. You're like, ah, oh, dang. Well, I found a city. But no, this is the first like, aside from Goof Troop and Aladdin, this was Shinji Mikami's first game he directed. Yeah. This is uh, also pretty much the beginning of survival horror as we know it. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, like there was Alone in the Dark beforehand, but Sound no one really like cared. Yeah, because yeah. it was Alone yeah. in the Dark. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to me, that original Resident Evil was, I mean, looking back on it, it's kind of silly, but like, man, getting into Spencer Mansion for the first time and walking around, and even like, I didn't care that, it, that the camera was fixed in those weird angles and that, you know, your tank your controls. Tank controls. Yeah. Uh, going back, it's archaic, but back then it was like, this felt like a, it was one of the elements of horror mm-hmm. that like, you weren't in control and you had limited ammunition and you didn't even know if you were lining up a shot correctly. Yeah. And, and ammo was scarce. Uh, I've, I've always said that like it is totally part of like I, I think the lack of the lack of control is kind of a fundamental part of survival mm-hmm. horror. In that, in the same way you watch a horror movie and the people are all really stupid, yeah. And you're like, don't run up the stairs. And you're like, if you're playing the game, you're like, no, don't crouch on the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> don't check your inventory on the stairs. So everything Shoot you got, them. Everything <laughs> you're describing is everything that modern Resident Evil games since four have forgotten. Sure. Totally. They've let go of it. Like I like Resident Evil Five, but it's a better action game than it is a survival game or a horror game. Yeah. Yeah. Ammunition is sort of limited, but it's also everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you require precision, but also you can recover pretty easily. Six especially is just a balls out action Didn't nonsense. Six, it's yeah. just like yeah. and don'ts. It's not it's um, not what you want from that franchise. Yeah. The the one thing that I, I remember most distinctly about the original Resident Evil is the fact that I think it was the first game 
that taught me to play a game differently than just going from point A to point mm-hmm. B. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. It was the first game that I remember thinking about almost critically. Like, oh, this. <clears throat> it's not about beating a level to get to the next part. It's really about planning. And like, I remember having to start over several times because I just didn't have the resources that I, I'd spend all my bullets on two oh, enemies. Yeah, or you'd yeah, run out of back ribbon. And like, and yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, like, well, now save. I'm totally. You know, I'm totally. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> sorry, Marty. There it is. Um, Fine. Yeah, Parker uh, said he wanted the cusses. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was it. It taught me to look at gaming completely differently than I had up to this point. Yeah, yeah. And I remember it was like my older cousin who was like, "Oh, I got this cool new game. It's really scary." And it was really yeah, scary. Totally. Like I remember yeah. it totally terrified me playing with him until like midnight it's or like, one in the morning. It's still unnerving. Like it looks like a blocky, garbled mess now, but it's still an amazing sense of ambiance and tone. And yeah. The atmosphere is incredible. Mm-hmm. Like you walk down an empty hallway and you hear something un- unsettling and you feel uneasy that because of it. Dread, it's like yeah. so good. Yeah, and it uses those fixed camera angles in a really smart way to where it's like, yeah, it's at the, the far end of a really long hallway that has an L at the end. You're like, oh God, I know something's, I'm going to turn that corner and something's going to happen. Um, and it is such a cool melding of genuinely, you know, scary things. And like Spencer Mansion, like the, the static backdrops look good still. Like it's really good looking. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the first time a dog jumps through a window or a bird tries to eat your yeah. eyeball. Or the sharks, or the I remember the dog scaring Wesker the crap puts out on his cool sunglasses. Yeah. Weren't the dogs in uh, in two, two. though? Yeah, no, no, they were the in one. Yeah, they were in one. one? That's okay. one of the first jump scares. Yeah. Is the dog jumping through okay. the window. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's another jump scare with dogs. That oh yeah, because it's me the dogs too. in the field that chase them into the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. That's why you can't leave is because yeah. of scary yeah. dogs outside. I, uh, um, I remember watching my friend play two, and there's that there's that scene where you're like on this kind of like this gantry, and you're on like some control thing. The is a gantry. That's like a sandy bridge. <laughs> no, I literally don't know what a gantry it's is. It's like, not... like a a bridge thing. It's like a it's like an <laughs> office. Uh-huh. It's like an office at the end of a bridge, you know? Uh-huh. Like a I don't like it's a, like, like a word a, that Max like just made up. It's like okay. a catwalk. I know what a catwalk. You're at the is. end of this thing, you know, and you're like in this little office, like control tower that's overlooking something. It's like a treehouse, and it's sort of like a treehouse for for like important for like industrial places. Men? Yeah, it's like a business treehouse. <laughs> it's an industrial business treehouse. <laughs> See, I don't derail the show. I just try. I can't keep it on track. You derailed it by saying gantry. gantry. Sorry you for you said, said business treehouse. Five dollar word. Yeah, I know what a business tree <laughs> is. <laughs> Um, there's some creative five, swearing four, for you, Parker. Five letters. Uh, yeah, anyway, so you're in there, and you're like, you're looking at security cameras, and I think Nemesis is like coming across the gantry <laughs> bridge, if that helps. <laughs> and you're you. like, and you're like, I don't have anywhere to go. And you're like, talking about in two? Uh, in two, yeah. That's no. Mr. X. Is it Mr. X? <laughs> Nemesis okay. three. Okay, Nemesis well then it's Mr. Three. X. Whatever. Did, isn't that the same dude? Or is no. The no. F- okay. No. I mean, I saw this in sixth grade, and it stuck with me enough <laughs> to remember you're on. A Gantry. Gantry. <laughs> Gantry. Uh, but anyway, like when at what point are you out there? Did you, and you like, the word Gantry? You know what I'm talking about though? Like that scene where you're like you're yes. watching him come towards yes. you, yeah. and like that sense of like I don't I honestly I, do, yeah. like, I remember I that scene incredibly well. Mm-hmm. I don't remember how you get out of it because I think my friend died and I got scared and like was like <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go get a snack. You know, like it was really scary. <laughs> We're gonna put on the Fluke Man episode. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all of Max's childhood <laughs> torments. Just, yeah, <laughs> um, but as you know, as as scary as all that is, it's also just the dumbest. It has the worst acting and the oh, worst. Writing yeah. Yeah. from that original game. It's, it's just, like the same level of like over the top that Metal Gear Solid has, oh, except totally. instead of being like tactical Bite military, tongue, sir. <laughs> it's like Bite zombies. Yeah. I really wish that when they remade Resident Evil, they committed to being like, okay, no, we know the acting is cheesy, and yes, that's part of what yeah. makes this game great, but we're going to remake it and we're going to do it for real. And we're going to have awesome performances mm-hmm. from really great actors. But they're like, no, nah, let's do it. Let's re record it, but make it bad on purpose. I mean, that's just dumb. I, I don't think necessarily they did that. I don't think that it's bad no, on purpose. No, they talked about remake. That. They were like, no, we want to capture the original spirit of Resident Evil. I stand corrected. Which is bad. I don't. I don't. Just, honestly, like the dialogue, the delivery, and everything in the first Resident Evil sounds like it's the first act of a porn, except no one. <laughs> <again>. There's zero <laughs> in that game. There's zero. F- I can write. I said. Well, that's, I why that's, that's why I called it Resident Evil Zero. <laughs> 25. Lots, All right. Lots of a lot of, lot of um, Also, the, the last thing I want to talk about is how weird and dumb that mansion was with those puzzles. Like, yeah. what if you were just working there and it was like, you didn't get the eagle talisman and put it on the diamond ruby. It's I like, need to, yeah. Have you seen that? I, we are out of flowers. I need oh, to, cool. Just take the, the jade crescent and yeah. bring it to like, the, the crescent hole. I need hole. to take a dunk. Where, how do I yeah. do this? Well, that's, like, that's <laughs> like the wonderful, like, the wonderful kind of, like, gray area between, like, nonsensical, like, I mean, Zelda bosses, where you're like, why was he in there? Like, what was... Like, <laughs> what was he doing? What is, that, what is the... I mean, it's like a weird, funky temple, and you're like, nothing makes sense here. You're fighting bouncing hats or whatever. Like, 
But like Resident Evil was like, yeah, you're like this tactical special force guys, but you got to find a typewriter yeah. and eat some herbs. And you're like, what? <laughs> it's like still classical kind of. You got to put it? some jewels you know, in a tiger's eyes. No, you find got a gun. You got that <laughs> little of dissonance. You know, yeah. you got there's another five dollar word, but like yeah. it's got that thing where you're like, this is one. this is Gantry. dumb video gamey crap. But and you have the same thing in like in Metal Gear Solid, for instance, but. It's like either tongue in cheek, or they actually find a way to like like Shadow Moses. It pretty much makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Aside from the pal key, where you're like, yeah, make this hot, make this cold. Aha, it works now. Like, yeah. I mean, that's that's. But very... that's just it's sci-fi. Like you can yeah. buy into that in terms of this is the fiction, but in terms yeah. of the place, Shadow Moses is pretty yeah. lucid. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. I mean, yeah. like it's it's got like a certain logic to it. Whereas like the yeah the mansion in Resident Evil is dumb. like it's very yeah. Silly. I mean, it's just like a real live Winchester house, right? Yeah, yeah. Or like a video game Winchester <gasps> house. Yeah, yeah. It's just I don't know. Like thinking about it now, it seems so stupid, but at the time, like it totally made sense in terms of like puzzle oh, yeah. solving in a game. Yeah, you know, totally didn't matter. Yeah. yeah. The last thing I want to say about it is uh, for the 20th anniversary, I'd be super stoked if a new Resident Evil got announced at E3 that was just called Resident Evil and didn't have any of this sick garbage. That'd that was be really just a cool, cool, spooky game. Set yeah. in a nice mansion. Yeah, That'd taking nice. it back to square one. Yeah. That'd Just, be really cool. It was uh, Capcom, and, not Square. Right. Oh. If if you haven't played the original, talking to you, Resident Evil, the, the, pick up the remake on yeah. PlayStation. It's on awesome. Anything. Yeah, like, it's really it's good. It's so good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really Except is a doors. testament to, yeah, the doors are bad, but it, it is really is a testament that that game stands the test of time. Yeah. Uh, real quick. Favorite, testament to test the test of test time. Test of time. Yeah, it was hard to say. Testies. Uh, favorite Resident Evil game? Four. Four. Uh, remake. Remake. Um, I never got into any of them hardcore. I just, I mean, yeah. I have fond memories of one and yeah, two. That's for sure. Yeah. Code Veronica. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Hot twist. Mm -hmm. Gantry. I just really hope this isn't Chris's blood. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so one thing that's coming out that I'm real excited about because I've been waiting very, 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 very patiently for it is the Star Wars Battlefront Outer Rim DLC. <laughs> Greedo! Yeah, thank you. Hello. Um, so yeah, this is this is like we've been, we had that stupid season pass thing. I think it's there's a week of like, is it week or two weeks that <laughs> season pass people have it? No idea. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a rube and an idiot, so I I ponied up that money first thing without knowing what I was you getting. You bought that super deluxe edition. I did. Me, uh, Brian talked me into it, and he's yeah. not here to carry this with <laughs> to, me. But to uh, defend uh, himself. Yeah. I'm excited because, and this is like the dumbest thing that you could possibly spend money on this far in advance, but I'm excited because you get to play as Nyan Yum, you get to play as Greedo, you get to, I think, do a backwards somersault. You get <laughs> Bosk's gun, which is that weird Trandoshan rifle thing. Uh, you also get the gun that Lando hangs off the skiff guard, skiff guard barge with. The long gun? No, 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 like the one that the one that he's like, he's like, close up, buddy, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna shoot yeah, it. And he's yeah. like, oh, when he's trying to shoot it with the one shoot the, uh, the yeah. tentacle. This all do awful Lando impersonations. Uh, I think me saying a little higher, just a little higher, was perfect. I will not do one. Don't look at me like you that. You try. Was here in the stars. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's interesting because this is the first big DLC pack that we're getting for Battlefront, but um, also it's kind of a phone in for the heroes. I mean, like. You keep Greedo. saying that. I'm so happy. Yeah, because okay, but there's al there's already been a uh, Greedo head in the game. Sure. Whoa, so like, okay. whoa, whoa. It's a Rodian. Rodian they're not Rodian all the head, same. Yeah. Okay. Dial back the racism. Sorry. Yeah. There's There's been a Rodian head in the game since launch. Mm -hmm. And so, like, what's the difference between playing as Greedo and playing uh, as Greedo this man? will, like, target, like, six people at once and just pew, 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 okay, basically Red Dead Redemption. I mean, yeah, so you have uh, you have that hero power, right? But cosmetically, like, too, right? Cosmetically, like but I don't... I, yeah, I, I don't know. He does something weird. There's, there's like, new... New weapons and gear, and there's new maps. There's like Jabba's Palace. Hello, you run around his garage, mess up that sail barge. Maybe have try to uh, f, f a Bomar monk. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that's gonna work. Yeah. Um, but no, like I just massage a weak uh, way's weird face. I really just I like the fact that they were like, yeah, who who do people really want to see? And they're like, we've got Boba Fett, we got Darth Vader, we got Luke Skywalker. Let's get that weird guy who hangs out with Lando who's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, I would love to see more stuff in there. I hope that we're going to get like a, eventually a big dump of like all kinds of different races and stuff. The, I mean, a great way to tease what the next heroes would be would be if they were like, hey, here's um, here's a Trandoshan uh, mask you can get. And you're like, is Boss coming next? Because we got his gun and we got his head. So yeah. put, him in, put that lizard in a space suit. I'd like that. <laughs> Make me happy. I like that lizard. You ever notice how you can't say uh, Nyan Nyam without sounding hammer drunk? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Comfortable Nyam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about this. I actually set an alarm to wake up really early this morning to go and just download it, but then I was really tired because my stupid fiance woke me up at 2 in the morning playing Fire Emblem. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was a <laughs> truly <laughs> riveting story. Really awful. I'm Ooh. so I don't know. I just I was I'm I'm gonna go home and try to play this eventually. Uh, and then of course there's Fallout 4 Automatron stuff. Isn't that coming to Xbox One first? Probably, yes. maybe. No, I think it's all. I might be wrong. Whatever. Don't care. <laughs> think it's coming to everything at the same Friendly time. Friendly reminder: PSA, Mitch <laughs> does not care. Well, it's uh, it's coming soon anyway, and that's the one where you get to go around and build some funky robots and yeah. you know collect all the parts and. Robots. I think there's some Rebels. missions too. As yeah. a fan of robots, I was very excited to hear about this Fallout 4 DLC, and then I remembered that I don't care about Fallout oh, 4. Oh yeah, me too. So. Uh, I did see it in office though, and it does look pretty cool. Yeah, you can build out like, like robot it so armor far, and which, yeah, all the power. Yeah. Yeah. Karen's been playing with a lot of robots. A lot of yeah. people still play this, you know. Um, people still play that. People still play this still Fallout. Play people again. will be playing this Fallout for a long time. Uh, I had this weird thing this weekend. Probably play through 2017. Uh, yeah, I was. I wanted something a little bit chewier than Battlefront, and I wanted something a little bit less tedious than Division. And I was like sitting there on my on my PlayStation and just like scrolling through stuff, and I was like. Uh, uh, I want to play something different. <laughs> what am I going to play? And I was like, man, I kind of wish I got into Fallout. I was like, should I get into Fallout? And I was like, I don't want to get into Fallout right now. Like, uh, it's, you know. Yeah, seems yeah. like a commitment. Again, I, I shook my head to that story. like an idiot, but like, I did the same thing this weekend and I oh, chose yeah, so Destiny. So, yeah. say what you will. Yeah. Hmm. I chose television. Fair television. Enough. Yeah. Just television. Watch I, drank new game. I drank in a park. Nice. Yes. I chose park. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Great job. Thanks, man. When do you play games, Marty? Rarely. <laughs> no, I don't know. I it's play, all I don't sham. Because I feel like you honestly play more games than me, and my yeah. excuse is that I'm cleaning up my house and mowing my lawn and stuff. But you're like, this. yeah, I know. You're just you go to bars, you drink at parks, you do trivia, you go kiss a lady, and mm-hmm. like, huh? Yeah. But you then you kiss a lady the, too. I do kiss a lady sometimes. Nice. And then she's like, get away from me, you're scruffy. <laughs> <laughs> so I kiss a dog instead. Oh, Pepper. Who's a good boy? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You're one of those people. I had a friend in, in high school who would just be like, he'd watched every show, mm-hmm. like he just constantly watched shows, and we're like, how? When do you sleep? Like when do you? How do you watch all these shows? And when do you sleep? Because we hung out all the time, mm-hmm. and he went to school, and then like he had work, and then, you know, sometimes he'd be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go home," and I'm like, "Do you just go to bed at like four o'clock in the morning and just TiVo everything?" And I don't. It's yeah. amazing. It's that was, that was one of the lot. great mysteries uh, of Brian Altano for me for a long time. Was like I couldn't figure out when he had the time to play because like we'd be talking about games, and he'd be like, "Yeah, I beat that." Yeah, I finished that too. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. It was like, how? Like, I hang out with you after work. Yeah. I, how do you do I'll this? Because also like, doesn't talk about games in the moment. He's not like, I'm in the middle of this. What do you guys think? It's yeah. like, hey, I beat the Kirby game. Yeah, it's like, what the hell? And then I come to find out that he wakes up at like 5.30 yeah. in the morning and plays for three hours before he comes into work. Yeah. Like, he just gets up super early. It was like, what? Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah, because his, his wife Sounds gets awesome. up to go do a Nurse. real job. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super jealous of that. I keep trying to get up in the morning, and I just don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's it's really hard. Awesome. I had one day where I like, I just had like the most productive morning, and I was like, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to get dressed and take my shower, and I got all ready, and I made a pot of coffee, oh and I put on my Boba Fett socks, and I sat down, and I started playing Battlefront, I got to Slave 1, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm Slave 1, I'm Boba Fett today, I'm so excited. And I got to work, That's and I was like, sounds like, exhausted by 11.30. <laughs> oh, I go home, I'm sleepy. No, I'm actual Boba yeah. Fett. Anyway, I don't know, games are super time consuming, and as I've, as I've gotten older, we've t- we talked about this a lot, but like yeah. sort of, I'm, I'm kind of appreciating the, the fact that I feel like I kind of have seen everything in, in Battlefront. And I kind of get that, like that casual arcadey approach to playing a game like Call of Duty. Like I've put, I've put 21 hours into Battlefront, which is not much. You yeah. Know? I put 95 hours into Metal Gear, but I feel like I still didn't see a lot in there. But I feel like I'm just kind of. Yeah, I mean, I think it's about redefining your expectations of like how you play a game. You know, where, whereas when we were in high school or college, it was really easy to just like blast through something because you had the the time to do that, mm-hmm. and you would sink that same amount of hours over the course of a week or two. You know, but like I just finished The Witcher three last weekend, right? And I put over 120 hours Dang. into it, and it took me almost a year, but I did it. You know, and it was one of those things where it was like, well. I never really thought that I'd finish this game, and I actually did. So it's just about kind of realigning those yeah. expectations. Mm-hmm. It's like, unless unless like we're here reviewing it or something, you know, there's no. I don't know. Like we'll play Uncharted, and yeah. that game will be you know the, eight, ten hours yeah. long, whatever, and we're all going to play it on a Saturday, and yeah. we'll all finish it in one day, and that'll be it. Like that is the time is weekends, but mm-hmm. then it's also the problem of like Max wants to have friends over for a barbecue, or it's somebody's birthday, mm-hmm. or whatever. And yeah, it's like. Balancing that sucks. Yeah. Being an adult is hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny to like actively choose to stay in and play a game as opposed to, you know, like there's like one or two nights a week where I'm definitely like, no, I'm just going to go home and play video games until I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, speaking of video games, that's speaking what this podcast good, speaking is Speaking of good about. stuff. Uh, Bully and Manhunt are on PS4 now through PS2 Classics, mm-hmm. whatchamacallit, uh, because Rockstar is basically like, 
It takes us a while to make games, but luckily all of our other games are real good, so let's just put them out on the new things. Yeah. Also, let's we'll re-release everything except Red Dead. Yeah, mm. true. Curiouser, huh. curiouser. Uh, so Bully <laughs> is awesome. Yeah, Bully's great. Bully's so good. Super fun. Yeah, Bully's I one of the secret best Bully. Rockstar games. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite Rockstar game. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second for me behind Red Dead. Uh, so that's upscaled for 1080p. Do we know now? if it's do we know if it's the scholarship I would imagine edition? It's scholarship. Uh, yeah, yeah probably. No, this is I believe this is the PS2 port. Was really? it ever on? Because wasn't scholarship edition on, on 360 Wii. and Wii? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Hmm. I don't I mean, know. It's it's never came to PS3. Yeah. Weird. Hmm. Uh, and then of course okay. there's Manhunt, which is uh, what, yeah, that's the the real the real nasty one. Real right? nasty yeah, one. Yeah, like, yeah. It's in the super arm. gory. It's like yeah. crazy over the top violent. There's just like super f up stuff that happens in Brian it. Brian like, Cox a, is always talking to you in your do you ear. Do you censor Cox? There's a <laughs> there's a a man that wears a pig's head and carries around a chainsaw in that game. It's very disturbing. I wonder yeah, if this version has the same <clears throat> PS2 headset thing. Like if you put your I PS2 headset that. on. The game would detect like noise in the background, and, and if you were like breathing heavily, it would understand like oh you're. You're getting like, stressed disturbed out, disturbed and stressed yeah. by this. And if like you were, you got scared by something that happened. Dudes in the area would, would hear, hear you. you. Yeah, like if you're breathing too heavily <laughs> as you're going up for a stealth kill, they'll hear you and turn around. And then you have Brian Cox like whispering. So did you have to play without the microphone or? Uh, that's Marty? rude because I have asthma. <laughs> Part of the reason I have asthma is because of dogs, and they're very nice. And we had one named Waffles in the office today, and he was wonderful. That dog's and I name touched was him. Waffles. Yeah, and I, I All right. touched him. Okay, <laughs> guys, come on, really, sorry. <laughs> come on, seriously, back on track. We're talking about like, murder here, okay? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, those this are both. Is, uh, this is the one with the stabbing, and not the one with the, the eyes, right? Because uh, wasn't there like a whole thing about like the like getting stabbed in the eye in the second Manhunt? There was like something about yeah. The second one was called Menhunt. Oh. Uh, it's, called, it's, it's, yeah. it's raining men. This, hunt. Yeah, I, I recommend Bully to literally everyone. Uh, I recommend Manhunt man hunt to me is now more interesting than it is. Good. Right. And even then, it's like it's not interesting enough for me to be like, oh, what a what a game you should check out. Yeah. Rockstar really did something interesting. It's like no, it's, it's about disturbing. Value, right? yeah. Like, yeah. It's not Rockstar like, set out to make a game that like literally a, turned people off. Film. Like yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's not. Enjoyable, and it's also not like a horror movie where you're like, "Oh, I'm I feel good because I survived the events on screen." I don't know. Manhunt always seemed really dumb to me. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's interesting because mm -hmm. that that's such a that's a studio that has so much so much like variety. Yeah, you yeah, know. And they start totally. off with goofy claymation GTA guys, and then they were remember like State of Emergency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And everyone's like, "This is gonna be great." GTA Three was awesome, and then it was like, "No, this yeah, is terrible." Just, mm -hmm. The and only thing they, impressive was there's so many people on screen. Then they made a ping dumb. pong game. Yep, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, it yeah. was great." The Warriors, yeah. remember the Warriors? Oh, yeah. the Warriors, Warriors is so is good. Awesome. Yeah. We were talking about that the other day. That yeah. that game rules. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also really interesting because in that you can kind of see the guts of some of the. I forget. I think was that before after that was before GTA. Four, Four, yeah, yes. Because it was a some PS2 of the game. Yeah. some of like the traversal and just the just the yep. totally yeah. yeah. It was like an update of their engine. How when GTA mm -hmm. Four came, you're like, oh, this is great. There, and I mean the same way that like the the mission structure was in in uh, Red Dead was like carried over to, mm -hmm. to Five. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that kind of stuff. I love the way yeah. they're just they're they will commit to a project. Yeah, everything will, is iterative. Yeah, yeah, it's really neat. The way but they I feel do yeah, they commit to a project, but I also feel like their teams internally talk to each other a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, okay, so it is time for rapid fire. Yeah. Uh, and, and to start off, uh, Brian's not here. He's going through uh, a very tough uh, family time, and a lot of you have already reached out to him, yeah. which is incredible. Uh, the Facebook group created this sort of amazing video for him. Uh, I, yeah, I just want to say yeah. to anyone who did no, that, thank you so much. Um, I guess without getting, uh, without getting too sad here, uh, Brian's mom is really sick, yeah. and that's why he's out today, and we're all pretty heartbroken about mm -hmm. it. And um, also his birthday's on Saturday, so... Life, am I right? Yeah. Send, uh, send him all your love, yeah. and yeah. he's he's aware. Like he's received so much, like just an amazing outpouring of love from this community and yeah. other communities, and like he's aware of that. Know that he has heard it and he's seen it, and he's like so happy about it. Yeah, and he is so grateful to everyone who listens to the show mm -hmm. and has sent him that love. He's been talking to us about it. So yeah, yeah. so you're doing good work out there. Yeah. So on that note, uh, Chris Dorkson said, if you had to listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? Significant other by Limp Bizkit. They're an awful <laughs> terrible no, person. Uh, Pinkerton by Weezer. That's Ooh, a good one. Ooh, yeah. damn. Uh, mine would either be Kanye's Graduation or Sketches of Spain by Miles Davis. I feel like I'd have to do I something without say, lyrics. I say Sketches of Spain. <clears throat> I feel like I'd have to do something without lyrics. Yeah. I feel mm. like eventually I'd go insane with lyrics. Uh, so if we're going to pick one with, with and one without, I'm going to go uh, Stop Making Sense by Talking Heads. That's uh, a, such a good one. Yep. And uh, My Life in the Bush of Ghosts, which sort of has lyrics, but not really. That's yeah. by Brian Dino you know. and David Byrne. Um, I would say with lyrics, probably Sgt. Pepper. 
Oh, wow. By the Beatles? Peppers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so long. Uh, if we're going without lyrics, um, like maybe a greatest hits record by Booker T and the MGs. Hmm. Yeah. Was Booker T the WWE superstar? Yep. Yeah. Former, one and only, yeah. That's, like, that's the guy champion. you played as in uh, Bioshock Infinite, right? Yeah. 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 Booker no, T. No, it's Booker uh, T. Uh, William <laughs> Shatner's television star. Oh, okay. Right. There's uh, Booker T's at those things on the shelf with the pages in them, right? Look, if you guys don't know who Booker T and the MGs are, that's fine. Just that's uh, <laughs> it's not a big deal. Uh, Booger Man at Pick and Flick Adventure for the Sega Genesis Entertainment Console. Um, Josh, Jason Hales says what Josh comic... Jason Hales. Josh Jason Hales. I knew a guy named Josh Hales, so I read that wrong. Uh, Jason Hales says, what comic superhero would you like to see a game of that hasn't been done yet? Invincible. Oh my god, Invincible Ooh. would be really good. Yeah, uh, to... Telltale and Skybound are super tight. I don't know if Invincible fits Telltale the best because there's a lot of talking in those comics, but really like the melodrama and the consequences of that is super interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know who I would want to make it, but Invincible is so good. If Invincible you've never read it, great. it's great. Uh, if, it's... The, if you took like the combat of like a Dragon Ball Z game, like a good Still one, a good, yeah. and then the dialogue of a Telltale game, and then combine that, that would be a really cool game for Invincible. Read Invincible. It starts out really slow yeah. and cheesy, and it's self-aware, but no, it there's, fun. there's like a hook that happens yeah. in the first trade where you're like, oh, that's what this is. Okay. Yep. yep. I'm on get, board. Get into that. Hmm. Marty? Uh, either Nemesis or Ex Machina. Uh, Nemesis is sort of like it's if a billionaire playboy who had the powers of Superman was just an awful terrorist and like mm. you have all these powers but you use them for bad. Oh, the Mark Millar. Yeah, it's about the cops who try to ha- exist in that world. Uh, and then uh, Ex Machina is sort of about a, a guy who gets these powers and becomes a politician and tries to use them for good. Yeah. Just give me a good Superman game. Yeah. Like, I'd love to play a Superman game that wasn't total what, BS. Where were we? Were we talking about how was that on an episode of Lock, Unlocked? How I don't understand how anyone can make a good Superman game. Yeah, like, like can it be done? I would love it to be done, but I don't know how. And like Destin was like, "Oh, it's easy. You do this." I'm like, "No, it's not easy at all. You're invincible." Yeah, I want to. I want to. Cool, I would love like. God, I would. Like, everyone's always said, like, what if Rocksteady goes to a Superman, Superman game? I'm like, game that'd be incredible, yeah. but I need to know how that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think really that cool. with, like, the stuff you see with GTA mods where people are like, yeah, you can fly, yeah. you can fly, punch things really hard. Just find somebody to dedicate, like, boss fights and a story to that. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. that could be really cool. Or even, like, the stuff that they've done in some of the Lego games. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, they nailed flying around the city. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, I mean, that, that groundwork has been laid. Just give me a mature Superman story, and that's. Probably not like the case can, with Zack Snyder's yeah, new film, but yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, like, where you see his no, wiener. I don't need. I mean, it's just a completely normal. I'm sure Superman. it's, a, it's, a, it's, I'm sure it's a very impressive wine. <laughs> He's a Superman, but it's an alien, alien wine. Uh, uh, last minute answer: Survival Horror: Why the Last Man Game? Oh, Ooh, that'd be good. Yorick? Damn. Yeah, that'd be good. Where women are the true enemy. <laughs> uh, if you never read Why the Last Man, read that comic. It's That's fantastic. Um, I mean, we're getting off the the path of comic superheroes. I would love to see. Like, this is dumb. I'd love to see a Sin City game. Did like, you see the never real? Did you see the prototype reel for <laughs> the Sin City game that almost happened? No, not even almost happened. It was a prototype pitch. I might have from the guys who did the Mark of Cree. Oh, oh wow! wow. Red. And and it's, it's their real their prototype thing was awesome. Where it's it's Marv and it starts out. It's like in a car and Marv is like jumping from car to car and the combat looks like Mark of Cree. Where like there are three guys. If you hit the buttons in the right order, he just takes them all out. And mm-hmm. the animation's incredible and the art's perfect. I should look that up. Yeah, yeah, I just I mean like I I've kind of outgrown Sin City, but I still would love to see. Like something between like like Anarchy Reigns and like Retro City Rampage, but like like an open yeah. world game where you're just sure. running around this messed up town and you're like, hey, I'm a bad boy. We got a big coat. Oh, that's a nice looking <laughs> coat. I'm gonna take that. Oh, let's just go beat up some frat boys. Yeah. <laughs> just like I mean, it'd be it'd be awful, but I'd, I'd be. It's a really it. good Marvel impression. If it was really yeah. cute, it would be kind of funny. Like if they really just doubled down on like Frank Miller's kind I mean, of cartoon. Look look. Oh, Lego Sin City. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so cute. <laughs> Lego Sin City. That's the most um, bonkers idea I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh man. Yeah, I, um, they already did a pretty good Deadpool game. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I want to play I mean, that. I never played that Deadpool game. Yeah, it was surprisingly good. That's on PS4 now. I, yeah, I'm waiting for it to drop. Yeah, to wait for a flash. Wait for price. a Steam sale. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, Saga is a good I was answer just for say, that. Oh, like oh I know, game. I know. Um, this is so, this is super dumb. This is not really a superhero game, but we three. Uh, it is a. I think it's Grant Morrison. It's a. It's a one-off trade paperback that is about. It's basically the Incredible Journey, Homeward Bound, but. They're cyborgs. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's awesome. If you can yeah. find this comic, check it out because it's just about like a dog and a cat and a monkey or something. And they're like, sounds incredible. They're just like, we're robots es- and we love Buddhist they're, texts. They're and like, we need to get west. They're like escaping from like a, a test facility and they just like start messing up shit. They're just like, they got like 
laser eyes or I forget even what happens, but it's it's super bizarre. But like All I right. want like I want basically uh, Metal Gear Rising meets Tokyo Jungle. Oh, that'd be good. Yep. Big fan. Done. Yeah. Uh, next up, Jeff Blowem <laughs> says, "Will there ever be?" <laughs> I'm sorry, Zach. <laughs> Did you laugh at blow? Zach, no, Zach. No, you were the Did one you who laughed at blow. No. You're supposed you to be an adult. You were laughing, weren't you? Go up here. Sorry. This is why Straight Mitch sorry. is leaving. Sorry, Jeff. This is why Mitch is leaving. Apologize now to Jeff. I'm sorry, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Will there ever be a PS I love you or kind of funny crossover with Beyond? Yes. Uh, Duh. Yeah, yeah. One of these Didn't days. Didn't we talk about it? Yeah, yeah, we had we, we did that with. Uh, Didn't we bring Grog Mangus on to yeah, episode four hundred? Yeah, yeah. Gurg Mangler. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but I uh, yeah I hung sorry, out with Greg Colin the other day, and we were talking about that. So yeah, we all like we all see each other all the time. They're they're pals. They're local. It's uh, it's just kind of because we're all busy on our own separate things at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and also wasn't Vince just on? Yeah. Uh, PS, I love you yeah. for mm-hmm. VR yeah. stuff. Yeah. Here's the thing: like they their thing. Shoots during the day. They're live. Yeah. Real hard for us to leave our office and our jobs to go do that. Right. Where are you That's going? Greg Miller's house? Why? You know? Yeah. 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 Don't you have work to do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. I do. Yeah. yeah. Colin made chicken cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Portillo. Johnny Nias says, What game do you wish you could play for the first time again? Oh, Skyrim. Yeah, Skyrim oh, wow. or Far Cry 3. Wow, really? Yeah, Skyrim. Skyrim was the first like big open world game where it really clicked for me. And it's like, I mean, I. So you I went talk, more I think for scope about and on, size and time rather than yeah. like a story. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think interesting. Well, I think it was the first game that I, it let me tell my own story, and I think that that was really impactful for me. It's like one of my favorite games of all time huh. for that reason. Um, and I think I talked about this on the Christmas episode of Beyond, but it's it's just one of those things where like that exploration has been unequaled to me since. Like even in The Witcher or Fallout Three or anything since then, it's like I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm completely with you on that. Like, there's the sense of not knowing what comes next. I and I have a similar feeling with uh, with Fallout Three. I think, but like with Skyrim, it was really like, holy crap, magical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I've always been more of a fancy guy than a sci-fi guy mm-hmm. too. So I always thought you were a pretty fancy guy. Huh. Uh, yeah, going into like Riften for the first time and just there's like leaves falling and I find this like water town and just I don't know. It was just it was like there's there's I can I can hear bits of the Skyrim soundtrack in my head. And yeah. It's just like, it was such an incredible experience. That's a game I wish clicked with me. I really wish that one did because everyone talks about it and everyone's so reverent about Skyrim and it just never did anything Ooh, for me. Like, I don't dislike Skyrim. it. I'm just like, all right. Yeah. yeah. And? I played just an unhealthy amount of hours in yeah. that game. Yeah. What I got 2,800 hours in Dota. You don't know unhealthy hours. Would you do Dota? Do you want to play Dota for the first no, time? Abs- I feel like that would be absolutely that would not. be a, a, so awful. an eternal punishment. If yeah. I was like, you have now lost all of your memory of Dota. And now I just have to do it all again yeah. and hate it for 50 hours straight. Yeah. Uh, man, I don't know. Either Bioshock yes, that was or Far Cry 2. So mine, I was thinking Bioshock, Journey, or Braid, if only because I want to be able to experience those singular moments again. Like the would you kind of... the sand. Yeah, yeah. the would you kind like that, see, and then the end of Braid. The That Bioshock for me was so much more about Sander Cohen's entrance than it was about would you... Like, I, I liked the would you kindly part. I thought that was really interesting. But, yeah. like, Sander Cohen coming down the stairs, I'm Sander... Colin, yeah. like I remember just being like floored. I by feel that like moment. that moment, like, like the structure of Bioshock, I f- in hindsight, like I feel like it misunderstands its own structure. Like Sander Cohen is the climax, and the epilogue is Would You Kindly. Yeah, and it just goes on for a while. You're yeah, like, I don't care about and any of this. There's a second epilogue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a real bad boss fight. Yeah, yes, there is. it is not great. I wish I could go back to 1994 and play Star Wars Dark Forces again for the first time. Ooh, that's that's wow. Like, yeah, I had yeah. a, I had a weird. I mean, maybe that's why. That's that might be why I love Battlefront so much. Specifically because it is it is a just a it is the resolution that Dark Forces was when I first played that like running around playing shooting Star Wars blasters and hearing yep. those noises and hearing those those like the, the music. And Did just, you miss Battlefront when it first came out on PS2 and uh, PC? I was into it. I just didn't. I, I didn't. I wasn't gaming much at that point. Okay. I remember being like excited by it. People were being like, "Yeah, it's just it's just <laughs> just Battlefield with Star Wars." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, so nice. yeah. yeah, perfect." Um, yeah, I played it. I think I played two a bit, but that was like all the Clone Wars stuff, and I was like, "Meh." I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Corey Michael Treadway says, Treadway, uh, how do you relax after a long day at IGN? You know, that's a, that's a great question. I help myself to a refreshing glass of cream soda, yeah. just like this big green glass bottle we have here, courcourtesy of one of our lovely listeners. Marty, I forgot. Uh, uh, yeah, Yair Dyer. Yeah. yeah. Sent, us, uh, sent us the bottle. This as was a-, uh, a nice refreshing bottle of cream soda that we are going to have for the week of <clears throat> GDC which is stressful. That's why this bottle is mostly empty, 
because we were thirsty. Is that so, the cream soda we had in the meeting room? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Was the cream that was, soda that was good cream soda. Yeah. I don't know what Max is talking soda. about. I get house drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> for, <laughs> for anyone not watching the video, uh, it's, Let me a, open up this cream it's a bottle soda. of... Nope. It's cream I soda. Can say, can it's I a, say... It is a glass bottle that is clearly says... Cream soda has a nice cork in the top, and it says it was established in 1824. Why does it taste and smell like Glen Live at 12? <laughs> I don't know. Cream soda is a weird drink. <laughs> and isn't it, who, who even likes cream soda? I got. I bought some uh, cream soda from Trader Joe's. Some actual cream soda, but it's like orange cream soda. So it's orange cream soda, but it's got <laughs> it's got booze in it. Okay, it's awesome. Uh, it's like drinking a boozy creamsicle. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, it's great. I mean, without there. without setting a bad example, we all do drink a lot at ice cream. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, for real, I read. I, yeah, I, yeah, I turn off. I don't play games. I mm -hmm. lie on the couch. I. What are you reading right now? I'm reading Spelunky by Derek Yu. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a boss That's, fight. I, I like that you're like, yeah, I'm a... Uh, I don't like to stop thinking <laughs> yeah. about games. Uh, so I'm reading Spelunky by the man no. who created Spelunky yeah, based no. on the game Spelunky. So I'm reading, I'm reading a, bunch, a bunch of stuff. I'm reading uh, Spelunky by Derek Yu. It's a book about game design. Derek Yu making Spelunky. It's out soon. It's a boss mm -hmm. fight book. Uh, that whole series is great. Check them out, especially Shadow of the Colossus and Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. I am reading uh, History of uh, Empires of Eve, A History of the Great Wars of Eve Online. Wow, which is a uh, so you don't like, care about Eve, like, right? I really like to no. un I like to unplug and disconnect. So here are the video game books I'm reading. Yeah, so let me read about uh, the the grand drama that happened in Eve Online from 2003 to 2009. Uh, I don't I don't play Eve. I don't like Eve, but this book is amazing, and I cannot recommend it enough. That's uh, really cool. And then I'm also reading Apostles by Tom Bissell, which is just a book about hey, I'm I'm gonna go to the Middle East and check out all the tombs of the uh, the apostles. I don't know how you read multiple books at once. I can only it's, ever read one it at a time. Insane. Would you call yeah. it? A, Tomb Reader, my yeah. man. Zing. Dude, uh, reading multiple books is hard. Yeah, and I can't yeah. stop myself because yeah. I'm just like, I, oh, I'm almost I can done. Only I'll start a new I one. can only read one at a time. Like I, I have to finish a book cover to cover yeah. before you know, I move on to the next one. One thing that I, of the three. I wish of. it <laughs> had been like ingrained in me was just like not finishing books or like intentionally being like, I don't enjoy this. I'm going to stop as opposed yeah. to being like, I should force myself it through this. It took me a long, long time to get to that point where I was like, I don't need to finish every book that I like pick Like I feel up. an yeah. immense amount of, I feel more guilt for not finishing books than I do for not, not finishing, finishing games. A game. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. a book is like, it's, you can see the end of it. It yeah. is, it is very clear. Tangible. You can see exactly how much is there. It's entirely up to you and your own brain to get through it. Um, I'm reading uh, Neil Stevenson's The Diamond Age right now. Uh, he's a great cyberpunk author. Uh, I've read Snow Crash, but I haven't read Diamond Age, and I'm enjoying it so far. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice leather man with rollerblades and a good, cyborg good, eye. Good. So I started reading Neuromancer once upon a time, then I started seventy other books. No, Neuromancer. Have you never read Neuromancer? No. You got to read Neuromancer. Yeah, I know. That's uh, that should be like required reading here. Neuromancer like, is like the original yeah. cyberpunk book, yep. basically. Oh, uh, I know it. It was awesome what I read. But well, I, my first off. exposure to that it's also incredibly dense to get through. Uh, my first exposure to that was I found uh, an audiobook of William Gibson reading it that oh, had a wow. bunch of like sound effects and stuff in the yeah. background. And William Gibson that sounds rad. kind of like. 60 year old Shaggy from Scooby Doo. <laughs> like he's sort of like, Soinks. Case was tuned to a dead channel, man. But like, <laughs> and it had all this weird kind of like future sound of London sounding like sort of music and Neat. the sound of like subway stations Sounds and amazing. stuff. Sounds yeah. amazing. Uh, really cool to listen to it as an audiobook and then, uh, you know, go back and reread it because there's just a ton of information in there. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. What about you, Marty? Yeah. Read a book? Uh, yeah. I read a lot. Uh, you listen write a lot, lot of music. I write a lot. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I write a lot of fiction outside of work. And yeah, I like going, I like not looking at a screen after, especially a long day of, you know, playing a lot of games or, or answering emails all day. Uh, so I, like, I go to parks. I wander around San Francisco. You go to parks and you have a nice allergic reaction because guess what is in the parks? <laughs> yeah. Animals. Dog. Dogs. And things that live. Dogs. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. live. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I, uh, I like to I like to play with my dog. Oh, like your dog. He's a real funny little dog. Oh, peppers. Yeah. All right. Well, um, this has been a, this has been a fun episode. It's been a fun episode. Yeah. I got a there's on, couple friends. there's a couple house cleaning notes. One yeah. is that uh, some of us are gonna be at Pax East nice. in about a month. I just found out. I think I'm going to be there. Yeah. Me too. Nice. Yeah. 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 We do not have a Beyond panel. We have no. a, there's a game school. Well, it's panel? just an IGN, a big IGN panel. Okay. That is that we're, we're doing do. it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I believe Alana's gonna be there as well. Cool. Andrew might be there. Yeah, Mitch will not I'll be there. Definitely not be there. No. Um, but if you see us at PAX, uh, come and say hi. We'll have more info on our panel, possible meet and greets, all that stuff. Yeah, if you uh, see Marty, ask him about Battletoads because he loves Tom. Don't ever ask him about Battletoads. Don't ask him anything. Just He's tell, a tell him. Huge Battletoads fan. Don't tell me Battletoads ever. One stop Battletoads doing that. Fan. Stop, Marty stop, Sleva. Stop telling yeah. me things about Battletoads. He likes to go. Marty Zitz Sleva. No. Who's your favorite? Rash, Pimple, or Zitz? None of them. What about all this terrible? What about the three of Pimple and Zitz? That seems Rash. There's one that's Pimple. There's one that's Zitz. There's a DLC character named Herp. 
No. <laughs> yeah, it's short for no, the perfect. That's I, not true. I totally fell for <laughs> it. Why did I fall for that? For a minute, I was like, when did they make DLC? Um, oh, I've been duped. <laughs> also, uh, coming up, we're, attached to the end of this episode is a bonus, a beyond bonus, and it's uh, Ryan McCaffrey's interview with Jamie Griesmer. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Which is part of our IGN First. Uh, uh, Jamie Griesmer works at uh, Highwire, which is a studio making Golem, mm-hmm. uh, formerly of... Uh, Bungie, Sucker Bungie, Punch, and but Sucker also Punch. Sucker Punch. So, dude made Infamous 2's Combat. Yep. Awesome. Full and disclaimer. Her, was it Second Son? This, I can't remember when he joined. Yeah. Yeah. Second, 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 second Son. Okay. This interview starts out, and they talk about a lot of Microsoft Halo stuff. So, if that if that scalds no, your ears, no, they cut that out. Oh, did they? They yeah. cut out completely. I had him cut it out. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. So, so then it's just going to go it's, right it's in like my a t- It's like a ten minute clip. Okay. Yeah. Well, then yeah. enjoy yourselves. So, and Golem's coming exclusively to PSVR. Correct. Infamous is cool. Um, that's good. That's that's coming up right after here. That's you're going to hear a voice that might be unfamiliar to you. Don't be worried. We're we'll still be here we're next week. Yeah, we'll be yeah. back. Uh, um, and then finally, uh, Mitch, you're leaving. I am. Yeah, we're, what's up? We made a joke about that, but that's, we that's did, yeah. very sad, but very exciting. I know. Uh, it's heartbreaking to, to leave IGN. I cried like a baby when I announced to the entire staff. We're going to do a lot of baby really, cries it was, soon. it was real hard to look at everyone and say, like, I'm leaving forever. Goodbye. I'll miss you all. It sucks. Yeah. Like, it sucks to yeah. leave. You've been here, what, four years? Four almost, years. Yeah. And IGN, I've been doing this for almost five at IGN. Yeah, I was going to say, time. weren't you freelancing first? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I did, well, I did contract for IGN from like. October 2011 to when I got my visa. Right. And then I packed up my entire life and drove down here. Yeah. yeah. And That's now nuts. I'm like, all right, goodbye. Got to change my entire life mm-hmm. again. Yeah. Which is horrifying. But, uh, but I have a cool new thing mm-hmm. that I cannot talk a ton about. I'm going to be writing, when he but says, you're not going to see it for a while. When he says cool, it's a bit of an understatement. Mitch, I can't imagine <laughs> better. I can't imagine a better opportunity for yeah. Mitch. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's one of those things like I'm at IGN until whenever right and the you come here and you're like oh this is my career now that's what i do what i do forever until this like wrecking ball of an opportunity comes to your life and it's like okay let's go mm-hmm. and you're like you just have to say yeah, yes i'm to just gonna spoil it right cool. now you're gonna go and you're gonna be uh you're gonna be miley cyrus's personal assistant oh was that gonna, the wrecking ball you're gonna help uh, proofread her instagram <laughs> posts about how you should be a vegan max we decided <laughs> the nda sorry we couldn't say it's an mda with her <laughs> it's an mda <laughs> <laughs> i like that wordplay nice. uh, did you say the same thing i did yes what, I said MDMA? MDMA? MDMA. Yeah. No, it's close enough. Miley, disclosure. Oh, I get it. I want MDMA because she probably does MDMA. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Undoubtedly. Mitch, like, we're going to miss you. How do they? How do people get a hold of you? How do you just... I'll be on Twitter. Still, okay. MitchyD on Twitter is the easiest way because I cool. can't turn off Twitter. And thank you to everyone who sent kind words and lovely thoughts mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. I've been like an amazing outpouring of support and congratulations and we'll miss yous and I love your work. And like that stuff means a lot. And it's, it's weird to know like, oh, these people have been out there the whole time as I've been doing this. And just sort of like throwing these words out into the ether and on IGN, and I don't know if anybody's reading this or cares or is enjoying it. And mm-hmm. Now I find out that everyone is, so yeah, it's awesome. all too little, too late, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you would have got some of those facts right earlier yeah. on the episode. Well, thanks yeah. for thanks for coming on, man. Like I've I've very happy known to be you here. for a while. I honestly don't remember how we met, but we went to Japan together. That was fun, and you I like I like working with you. Yeah, we, we invented sleep, sleep jeep. Yep. We never we never did the follow up to that. I know. Who knows? I don't Real know. Big miss. Still a week and a half. Yep. Uh, anyway, Marty, you're McBiggity on Twitter. That's yes. two G's and two T's. Mm-hmm. Zach, you are Zacharias D. Correct. <laughs> Zacharias. That's right. Zacharias. That's right, yeah. Okay. You can pronounce it any of those cool. ways. Yeah, Zacharias yeah. D. Right on. What does the D stand for? Daniel. That's my middle name. I thought it was Dick. <laughs> I'm not even writing Suck. that down. <laughs> <laughs> Dick is also it can be a middle name. Yeah. Sure. All right. Yeah. On that note, I'm, I'm Max Scoville. I'm, I'm Max Scoville on Twitter, and uh, that's, uh, that's the end of the show, and now it's time for an interview about Infamous. Goodbye, on. <laughs> Goodbye, on. You leave Bungie and you go to Sucker Punch. You yeah. you're move from one high-profile first-party studio to another. Yeah. Uh, infamous. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the? Thanks for glossing over that. Leave. I like that. Well, uh, yeah. well we don't have to go there. Um, yes, I. Uh, it was, there's this funny moment where I'd only been at Sucker Punch for maybe two months, and they have this big meeting off-site where they gather the whole team together, yeah. um, kind of um, by discipline, and the founders get up there, and they're like serious, but they don't look sad, you know, because that meeting could be bad, right? Right. And they're like, okay, does anybody have any speculation for what this meeting's about? I'm like, we're getting bought by Sony? Because <laughs> I've been through that before, process yeah. before, yeah. So yeah, we're just gonna sell Highwire to Nintendo, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll complete my triumvirate. Yeah. Get that patch on your exactly Cub Scout, Cub yeah. Scout vest. So, uh, what's is is uh, how's the perspective change working, or is it just the same? You're you're just making a game, 
for a platform? Do you, does it feel any different than working on a high profile game for one first party versus another? Um, uh, yeah, I mean for me it was a great challenge because it took me out of kind of my element and my familiarity and said, hey, can you recreate any part of what you had at Bungie? Like, like can, you, can you come up with good combat? Can you build good AI characters? Like, how much of that, like, is it in you? And how yeah. much of that is kind of part of your surrounding team? It's, I don't want to discount how awesome Sucker Punch is too, but you know, I, I, you get a better feel for what you're bringing to the table when you are at multiple tables. Right. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I think um, the culture at Sucker Punch is uh, less based in multiplayer trash talk. So uh, I had to tone down a lot of the rhetoric. Oh, because you guys, well, yeah, you guys were a bunch of young, young guns when oh. you were coming up at Bungie, yeah. right? So you just talk crap to each other. I mean, other we would play time. multiplayer two hours a day <laughs> against the same people over and over. You know, yeah. inevitably that's going to spill over into a design discussion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, at Sucker Punch, you know, they're much more kind of calm and relaxed, and so. I would say something bombastic about this sucks, and then everybody go, "Oh my gosh, he thinks it sucks." And I'd be like, "Oh, no, it, no, it's fine. We just have to fix it." It's like I didn't, I didn't mean it sucks. Sorry. You're like a human <laughs> internet commenter. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just you know, it's just a different t tone for sure. Um, but you know, at that time, I um, starting to build a family, and um, Sucker Punch is very family friendly, so it was it was a good fit, and I, I enjoyed my time there quite a bit. So you're there for a little while, but then. It's, it's, you move on and you decide you're going to buddy up with uh, Marty O'Donnell. Yeah. Who, of course, your initial sort of liaison into the games yeah, industry. Yeah, the circle is complete. And um, uh, Jared Noftley, who. Noftel, yeah. Uh, Noftel, sorry. Yeah. Uh, from, uh, who'd, who'd been the CEO at Airtight, yeah. who'd mm -hmm. made a few interesting games. Yeah. Uh, Dark Void yeah. and, and uh, uh, Quantum Conundrum. Uh -huh. So, and you guys decide, okay, let's, let's get out of this whole AAA thing. What now? And you choose VR. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, that's, that's a risk, right? I mean, because we, we still don't know. Yeah. We still, I mean, I guess by the time this airs, one or two of them will be out. Uh, PlayStation VR is out yeah. in October. Yeah, it's happening. But yeah, yeah like, why? You know, why, why uh, that, is it, a, is you want to take on the challenge? Is it just, you just see that as the future? I'm curious, uh, why the vet, veterans such as yourselves would, would venture back out into the Wild West. Yeah, well, I mean, I think because uh, because the Wild West got civilized, <laughs> and I kind of miss I kind of miss the the ruggedness and kind of danger to yeah. continue your, your metaphor there. I like it. So, I mean, I think there was you know there's a, there's an opportunity for me to go into a AAA studio, kind of do what I've always done, and... Your phone's probably ringing off the hook at that yeah, point. Yeah, right? well, you know, not off the hook, thank you, but uh, um, I could have I could have probably ginned something up. Yeah. Um, but there's a certain sense of, like, I rode that roller coaster, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, look, let's be honest, no game I'm ever going to work with or on is going to be as successful as Halo, so the pressure's off. Now I can just kind of pursue whatever is interesting and and um, when Marty and I both were kind of in between things at the same time I was just like look let's just let's just roll the dice like let's see what happens um, and we started talking and we had a lot of kind of similar ideas about where things might go um, and a lot of you know the, the AAA industry has changed so much when we got since we, when we got started when I joined the halo team it was 15 guys. Yeah. And when I left, it was 500 guys. Yep. And gals. And now, now it's, it's like a thousand. Yeah. I mean, it's distributed across two continents. This is it's enormous. So, um, I, I, I just I fit better on a team where um, we're tackling kind of new weird problems that have never happened before, rather than just implementing like known solutions and just kind of iterating. Um, I, I create problems on that team because I'm like, well, I know that worked last time we did it, but let's try something completely new, you know, just because I'm bored, basically. <laughs> you so, want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so I needed, I, I need, to, I need new kind of um, uh, difficulties to to overcome. And Marty's the same way. I mean, for an old guy, he 
is he's got a very young outlook. Like he's always trying new technology and new techniques and learning new tools. And I have a huge amount of respect for 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 his ability to do that and kind of how it's steered his career. And so he's like, yeah, you realize sound and VR is going to be totally different, right? And I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> Let's work together. <laughs> and then Jared came about because, you know, Marty and I at the table have a certain kind of skill set and talents and none of them are technical or kind of engineering related and we need somebody to slide on that gap. And Jared, is, I, I hadn't worked with him at the time, but I'd known him and known him as like a stand-up guy that I could, I could trust. So I'm talking to Jamie Griesmer. He's uh, the co-founder, one of the three co-founders of High Wire Games, working on Golem for PlayStation VR. Yeah. And that's my next question: is you've got, you know, you've you know, you've got uh, Oculus out there. They've mm -hmm. been very high profile for a mm -hmm. while. Uh, Valve, of course, no nobody to be ignored. Yeah. Working with HTC on the Vive, doing yeah, yeah. their thing, and then Sony with Morpheus, now PlayStation VR. Yeah. What made you? Uh, go in with Sony as opposed to one of the other two? Sure, uh, man, um, all of the headsets have like kind of advantages and things that they're great at. Um, and also, you know, they share limitations and um, a lot of it had to do with the people. So when I was at Sucker Punch, I got to know the executives over at Sony very well. Mm -hmm. um, and they get it, like they are gamers and they make decisions that are based on what's good for the game all the way all the way up to the top and so um, when we were pitching golem I mean it's it's kind of a different take you know there's not there's not like a baseline for VR yet but even even then we're sort of an outlier and doing something in a different direction and the the Sony guys got it right away they got what, what we were trying to do even from an early prototype and and got behind it really early and so it just it was such a good fit we kind of had to cuz yeah you were telling me i mean there's a story on IGN that we did after interviewing you guys at your studio it's golem is a PlayStation VR exclusive title but there are points in the game where uh, in, be, that you will be having people actually take the helmet off mm -hmm. and play on a television yeah well what we what we found is that um, even the most hardcore gamer who's like into tech and gadgets and gets all of it. Uh, the f their first VR experience, um, they're not going to be as comfortable as they will in their second and third and fourth. It's something that you acclimate to. Yeah. Uh, and there's n very little correlation between kind of how much you play even action games like a first person shooter and how quickly you adapt to VR. So. Um, I've had some people who've been gamers their whole lives and you know play Halo competitively, and VR really kind of sets them off, and they have to be really careful. And then you know I I know other people who aren't interested in video games at all, they play all the way through some of our earlier prototypes and no problem. So we've what we found is we need to put you in the headset and then take you out of the headset, but let you keep playing the game. Yeah. So there's something to do outside <coughs> of the headset push you back in the headset for a little longer this time and um, sort of over, it's not, you know, it's not like over days or anything, but it's like gradually acclimate you to to, to being in VR. So uh, the game for, if you haven't been following our, our coverage of Golem all month long, it is, it is uh, for me, it's one of the most promising real games I've mm -hmm. seen in VR yet because a lot of what we've been seeing in VR so far uh, have been a lot of a lot of tech demos, a lot of mini games. Mm -hmm. If you guys are crafting a real game, give me the well, not give me, give the audience <laughs> the sort of Cliff's Notes version on on exactly what Golem is. Sure. So um, in Golem, you play as this uh, adventurous sort of um, impetuous kid who is off exploring this um, abandoned city near her village when she gets injured, like seriously injured. And so uh, you wake up and you're in your bed and, and you can't walk anymore. Um, and so while she's confined to her room, um, she develops this ability to reach out and take over these creatures called golems. And the first thing she does is she kind of like sees through the eyes of her doll. And then she learns <laughs> she can make the doll like stand up and walk around on the floor of her room and explore her house. But eventually she gets... Which is you in VR. You are in the doll. You're yeah, doing. yeah, absolutely. And we're kind of using her experience to as an analog to yours. So as she grows and 
sort of familiarity with controlling golems, you do the same thing with VR. And so, yeah, when you put on the headset, that's when you take over a golem and you're seeing out of the golem's eyes and you're using the golem's like hand. Um, and eventually she gains the ability to, to uh, control these large, you know, 20 foot tall stone giants with equally massive swords. So even though the game, so the game does not use the DualShock 4. Yeah, I mean, the best, the best way to play right now in VR is to um, get a sense of like hand presence, they call it. So we have your eyes and we have your ears and that's all going toward the player, right? right? But we need for the player to be able to reach back into the world and manipulate things. And we found that the move is a pretty good tool for that. Nice, so, and then the, the movement too, is interesting. You don't have thumbsticks because you've decided to use the move. Mm -hmm. So you actually have come up with a system where, uh, which I've tried and it's perfectly natural. Yeah. It's a it, you're just using the the head tracking that the thing are that the VR unit already does. Yeah. To move yourself. Yeah. So we did almost a year of prototyping. We've been working in VR for for a while um, and. One of the first things we tried, obviously, was just like, okay, we'll just do first-person shooter controls, um, like in VR. Yeah. And what we found two things would happen. One, like people would <clears throat> have a bad reaction and get sick right away because you know you're moving around very quickly and you're changing direction very quickly. And anytime you are moving your your view around without matching what the head tracking is doing, you're in a, that's that's definitely an nausea trigger. So then the other thing we found was people would just sit there like this. Like they're just playing a first-person shooter with a yeah. big screen in front of them, they, right. and they weren't in the experience. They weren't looking around the world, and they weren't kind of like be like believing it, kind of um, on a on a basic level. Uh, so we decided pretty early, like, uh, yeah, thumbsticks are just there's too much baggage. They're bringing too much baggage with them, and so we were looking for other ways that you could control your character. And we went all the way back to, well, okay, if I'm just walking around in a space, how do I do it? Well. I lean forward a little bit, and that moves my center of gravity forward, and I take a step, right? And I just keep leaning forward and keep taking steps, and that's how you move in real life. Right. So in Golem, if you want to have your character walk forward, you just lean slightly forward in your chair, and your character fairly naturally just starts stepping. And that works in any direction. You can back up, you can stop. Um, and it's so sensitive. Like we know where your head is to down to the millimeter because that's how VR works in the right. first place. And so you don't have to, you know, you're not on a rowing <laughs> machine or something. It's just like, if you watch somebody that's been playing for a while, it's like you can barely even tell that they're moving. Nice. Last couple questions I have for you. First sure. of all, uh, you know, you, you've gone from, like I said, well, the, the 15 person Halo team swelling to 500. Yeah. Now you're back to a nine person <laughs> team at yeah. Highwire. Uh, do you ever see yourself working on a big team again, or do you is is the small you know insular tight team the way forward for you? I love working on a small team. I, <laughs> I mean, that's how I came up, and um, that's kind of where I'm at my most happy. Um, and fortunately, the way the industry is going. You don't have to be on a huge team to make an impact anymore. Yeah. So we're using the Unreal Engine, which means you know that's at least 50 people that would be building an engine in a traditional studio that we just let Epic, you know, kind of pay and manage because they're really great at right. it. We just use the end product. Um, and then with the amount of outsourcing and kind of specialty contractors that, that you have access to, and especially in a hub city like Seattle, you don't have to have a concept artist because you just Go work with the freelance concept artist that's amazing and if you don't have anything for him to do you're not paying him in the meantime so right. you can keep the team very small but but leverage all those connections and and all those resources to, to make a more impressive game and then uh, last question I have for you Jamie is you, know, you, you like working on a small team but what about VR is golem mm -hmm. a one-off project for you guys and then maybe you're gonna go back to making a, you know, like a, a first-person thing, a shooter, or like a Firewatch type thing, or sure. a Witness type thing, or or is Highwire a VR studio and you guys are all in on VR? Yeah, I mean, Highwire is a games company, first and foremost. <coughs> um, we want to make these interactive experiences that are kind of skill-based and have amount of investment and progression. You can have a, like, we're, we're a games company. That said, 
it'd be pretty hard to stop working in VR now. Now when I play a, I, call, I, I found myself calling them a 2D game. It's like a fully rendered 3D shooter, right? but it's on a TV, so it, you know, it feels flat now. Like it feels kind of um, distant, like in a window. It's, it's, it's just a postcard. It's not being there like VR is. So I'm, I'm one of the reasons why I'm so out there and talking about VR is because I want it to happen so bad so we can continue making content for VR because it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's a whole other level. Awesome. Well, the game is Golem. The man is Jamie Grease from the studios, High Wire Games. We're covering Golem all month long as part of IGN First. Be sure to check out our coverage if you haven't been keeping up with it already. Uh, we're going to look for the game at some point, we don't, we don't, when it's done, yep. to, use the old, yep. to use the old adage. You guys haven't committed to a date just yet, but it is a story-based, full, full game yeah. made for VR, not a mini-game collection and not a tech demo yeah. real thing. Yeah, it's early right now, but we're excited to kind of keep sharing things as they get to the level where we can put them out there, and um, we're really excited to have people play it. Great. Jamie, thank you so much, and for much more on Golem, keep it tuned right here to IGN.